You are now tuning into the Vibe with Your Boys podcast. Starring Kyle the Kid and Mega the Boy. Yeah, dig. It's your boy Kyle the Kid and Mega the Boy, and we are here with another episode of Vibe with Your Boys podcast. Yes, sir. Love with your I'm doing, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. How you living, Megan? Man, cool it, cool it. You know what I'm saying? The heat, the heat let me down, but it's all good. No fun. We got to you know, brush that off. You know, we got bigger and better things to focus on. Fact. Like, if you haven't noticed already, we got the lovely boss lady key with us. Hey, y'all. What's up? What's <laughs> going on? I don't know shit about the heat game. Can I hurt some him? No, nah, hey, don't you? Oh, it's your world. I don't know shit about the heat game or what the fuck they talking about, but I am so happy to be here. And we're happy to have you here. <laughs> Yes, the like I said, lovely and opinionated kid <laughs> we have with us, and I'm I'm actually looking forward to this episode. I feel like it's gonna be a good conversation. So, how you doing? How you feeling? I'm doing well. I'm feeling well. I just had me a show last night, so I went from having a show, sleeping in to like eleven or twelve o'clock, and you know, trying to run errands and hit up and run here and be here. <laughs> so, you know, um, the music life is really coming at me fast. Mm-hmm. It, Where was the show at? Um, it was in Miami at a um club called Climax. It was Climax. my first time ever okay. going. Climax, please get a bigger stage because I can't work the club with you the stage. You know, no, no, <laughs> it was the stage was little like this. <laughs> <laughs> like I couldn't even do my thing. I like to go out in the audience, yeah. like move around, work the room. Like I literally was just like but I'm I'm happy y'all invited me. I enjoyed my time. Thank mm-hmm. y'all for having me. But get a bigger stage. Yeah, yeah. By the way, she pointed, no. she pointed at a coffee table. Y'all, y'all stayed the size of a coffee table. For real, I'm dead ass. But we appreciate the love. Yeah. Yes. Appreciate the love. Yeah. Thank y'all. Definitely. I love y'all. So that was your first performance. Uh, were you like nervous before then, or? Um, that wasn't my first performance. Um, that was probably my fifth or sixth okay, performance. Okay, okay. Um, I have performed in Pompano. I performed in um. Houston, Texas. I performed in Jacksonville. I don't really get nervous because I'm like a people person. I think. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. And I feel like y'all don't know me and bitch, I don't know y'all. So <laughs> y'all don't know my song. Y'all don't know the fucking lyrics. So if I fuck up, who gives a fuck? Yeah, that's so right. that's how I feel about it. So I just get on the stage and I try to treat everybody like we family. That's how I look at everybody in the crowd. Okay. Yeah. okay. Um, when did you start getting into music? Was it something like... Listen, y'all, you know how, I don't know if y'all was raised in a church or not, but I'm going to get hurt. Okay, so y'all know about being in the youth choir, Mm -hmm. going to church on Wednesday, Friday night, all of that. So Mm -hmm. I was raised up in a church singing, and I love singing, and I always wanted to be the lead singer. It's it's kind of making sense, because I see on Twitter, you be doing a little, you know. (laughs) Yeah, 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 yeah. you be wild on Twitter. Marching, marching and jumping, and you you like, you know. (laughs) Yeah. Out in the clothes, clothes, <laughs> doing these little gospels. I'm like, hold on. Yes, yes. Yeah. I was raised in the church, okay. um, praise, dancing, singing, mm-hmm. plays, all of that stuff. And then I wanted to become a singer. I went to Parkway Middle. It's a school of performing arts. Mm-hmm. I went there to actually sing, learn how to sing. But when I went there, they had us singing classical music. I was like, oh. yeah, yeah. and I was like, this is not what yeah. I thought. I'm thinking I'm gonna be you singing for be Franklin, like, yeah. like yeah. I've been yeah. going. That's what I was thinking. Okay. And I said, this is not what I expected it to be. But I end up loving it because they taught me how to read music, mm-hmm. how to write music. But I stopped going to through the through the program because I had to wake up so early for school. So I said, you know what, forget that. So I left the magnet program, and I, when I went to high school, I started mic checking. And that's when you, like, play a song yeah, yeah, and cut yeah. it down yeah, and yeah, cut yeah, it yeah. up. Yeah. Yes, and I had, like, a little mixtape, and I was sharing it all throughout high school, and people were telling me to pursue it. But I, don't, I was doing it more as a hobby. Mm-hmm. Um, so I never like really took it serious. I ended up going to school, going to work and stuff like that. And more recently, like, you know, on Twitter and my social medias, I always, I'm always fucking around. Yeah. Always. I've always been that type of person. Um, mic checking, dancing or whatever. And some people actually saw me. Their name is Black Excellence. They're my current label. And they said, you know, do you take rapping seriously? And I said, it's a... It's a hobby more than anything. And they said, well, you know what? Whenever you get a chance, come down to the studio, you know, fuck around on the mic and let's see what happens. And they played um, a track and I wrote to it that same day. And they was like, listen, you really need to try to push it. And they believed in me and they took a chance on me. And now I am here where I am now. So, so this like ended up being something that you started off with, kind of like put on a hold 
and then somebody noticed you catch interest like yes. see like she has something and Correct. then brought it out of you and now you're going with it Correct, because I was more so trying to go down the traditional path of life, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Like, okay, yeah, go to school. school. I was right. actually going to go to the Army at one point. So being a rapper was something I never really mm -hmm. took serious. Like, my cousin had the computers and the keyboard and all that stuff, and I would go to his house and play mm -hmm. around with the mic checking. But it was nothing that I actually said, I'm going to do this full time. Mm -hmm. um, because I know when you are pursuing a passion, you have to have backing. You got to have money and stuff like that. And yeah. I was very young and I just, I didn't think that that was the way of life. Okay. Really. I was like, I got to work. I got to go to school. I can't be in this goddamn room playing with you. <laughs> talking about sing louder in the mic. Do what I did you go to school for? Um, I went to, well, I got my first degree in mathematics education. Like nobody oh, knows so you're a mathematician. <laughs> something, oh, like that. something like that. Okay. Yeah. Um, that was in 2010. What? No, okay, no, no, no. I'm expected because no, I get it. math lost me once they started adding letters. Once they started adding letters to it, that's <laughs> it for I love math because math is something that is absolute. It's something that you can never change. Oh, yeah. Plus two is always going to be two. Absolutely. When it comes to that's all that it. other shit, it's two A plus two A. Oh, well, I don't know. <laughs> Probably okay. four, two, eight. <laughs> Listen, don't ask me about shit I graduated in in 2010. I said it was in 2010. Okay, I don't okay. forgot math. I use a calculator now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but my new degree, I, um, I just got it in business, and I'm planning okay. on going next year for accounting or marketing. Oh, I so you're not life. done. I ain't no, I think you just recently got I'm going to keep done. going. I'm going to keep going. If I can be a that's doctor, that's PhD, that's what I'm going to do. That's dope. Yeah. Even if the music pop. Even if the music pop, I'm going to just... Do both. Why not? Yeah. Why I almost got ADHD or something, so I can't sit down. So you're going to come, come, you go from performing on stage to doing surgery? Correct. <laughs> okay. Right, right, right. Correct. Yeah. Okay. And then, um, I'm not... So, how, how much music do you have out now? Like, where is the music? Are you, do you have it on, like, different, like, platforms or... Because I see you have the link in your bio. Yes. Where my hoes at. Yes. Did you ever okay. find it out? Yes, um, <laughs> it's a lot of hoes. Like, honestly, every hoe that, I see that, is that's a, a That's what I wouldn't know. Like, every hoe that I see is a hoe okay. in my eyes. Like, okay. when I see a pregnant person, and they be like, oh, that person's so innocent. No, she's a hoe. Like, she was she pregnant. Had some like, stuff. Exactly, okay. she's not innocent. Okay. 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 She's not okay. innocent. She was sucking a dick, and then she got nutted in. That's a hoe. So, okay. Okay. what I was trying to do is, I was trying to put... Like, you know, no, people, like, for real. Uh, be a group. Okay. Yes, so you know, okay, people no take the word hoe or bitch and try to make it like a negative thing, which, you know, it can, depending uh, on your connotation. So you know, you're after those type things. Yeah, so yeah. I was trying to say, listen, at the end of the day, okay. we all can probably be a hoe. I'm, I'm a hoe sometimes. It's different aspects of a woman. Like, I'm a mother. I'm an employee. I work as a finance manager right now. I'm a, I was a student when I was in school. I'm a rapper. And sometimes I am a hoe. So I was trying to get women to understand, listen, if like, somebody like, call you, I'll let them know, and I'm a damn good one. Like, so a, that's like what on a I'm Wednesday, Thursday type thing, but you're not all the time. Like, yeah, not all the time, because we're not okay. everything all the time. Okay. We're not everything all the time. We have different, as, to me, I feel like being an individual, there are so many different compartments mm -hmm. and aspects to us, and yeah. some things we have to like let it be what it is. If you were home, you were home. So it's just, it's just take ownership of it. Basically. Take ownership. If you the hoe, you the hoe. We all hoes. We all fucking fuck. Your mama did it. Your grandma did it. Your great grandma did it. The ancestors. They all was doing that. How do you think we got here? Okay, I understand that. But is there a certain level of wholeness that you just can't come back from? Because if everybody hoe, we get it. Everybody have a little hoe. Like, everybody yeah, yeah. have a little hoe. Oh. Well, you must agree. There's a certain level of wholeness that you can't come back. Okay, when, when, when does it become derogatory? Yeah, 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 yeah. For me, when it becomes um, derogatory, it's when you put pussy ass in front of whole life. Pussy ass hoe. Now, now we okay, got to talk about okay. okay. disrespectful. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. It all depends on how you say it, how you do it. You know, like with the N word, you know how they say, the we can say yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if a white person say it, or if somebody mm -hmm. be like dumb ass nigga, stupid ass nigga, that's different versus like my nigga, like what's up? Okay, okay, so okay. I feel like they both have their very. So I'll walk up to the and be like, my hoe, what's up? No, don't do that. Oh, okay. don't we do not there yet. Only for the hoes. Okay, okay, okay. I want you niggas never ever to call a bitch a hoe because. I will cut you. I better not. Please right. don't. Right. I will cut you on scene. <laughs> okay. So okay, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. that's what we have with it. But to answer your question, I only have one song out now, which was the first song that we ever did. Okay. Um, we wanted to put it out and see what the reaction yeah. would be. 
Um, honestly, that's not the type of music I wanted to make. Okay. Like my favorite rapper is Jeezy. I wanted to make like more like hard yeah. music. But honestly, to be completely honest, men don't want to hear women talk about that. Yeah. And that's something that hoes really can't relate to or girls really can't relate to. So you got a woman like me dressed like this saying, yeah, you selling O's on the block, pills yeah. on the street, yeah. get with me. Like, they're going to be like, what the mm. fuck are you talking about? So um, that's why we did where my hoes to kind of like pitch towards, I guess, like a certain demographic or whatever. So that one song is out. I'm going to have a new song coming out June 1st. And I actually got about 10 songs done right now, but I'm not sure when the project is going to be released. Okay. Um, so you are working on the project? Yes, I am working on the project, yeah. And so what you said, what you wanted music to be about, mm -hmm. and what my whole is that, it's not what you type of music you want to make. So what what, what direction is your music taking? I guess, um, like, you, you think, like... I think my music is... I have about 10 songs, like I said, and five of them is geared towards like women having a good time. Mm -hmm. And then I have like two that's like about heartbreak or something. Okay, like that's 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 loyal. That and then I got like three that's like target toward target towards men. Mm -hmm. Um they let me kind of have that versatility because mm -hmm. I was like, I don't want to make music like this. Like I don't want to be the next you know, everybody is quickly to say, you want to be the next City Girl, yeah. the next Cardi B. And I love them. I know all their lyrics work for work. But mm -hmm. it's like, I kind of wanted to create my own lane, right. if that makes yeah. sense. But when I listened to the um the song in the club, my first time performing it, that was like my first time liking the song, for real, for real. I was like, okay, this is good. Right. Yeah, I was like, okay. it sounds kind of good. So I fought with it. So with that being said, I took their professional advisory, like, Listen, we're going to kind of put you over here. And then maybe when I get a larger platform or larger space, maybe I can venture out mm -hmm. and really see what's what. But honestly, I'm willing to do what the streets say. I don't okay, give a damn. Okay. I'm doing what works. Yeah. Okay? The reception you get is how you go off of it. Correct. And, Correct. I, and I also see you, like, got some uh, choreography going on. Like, it be oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Correct. So. Like, one, two. Yes. So where that come from? Like you always been able to like dance and stuff like that, or yeah, listen, it, it stemmed back from um oh, from really? the singing. Like I said, um, I was in the church and I used to praise them. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. Oh, when no, I say no. I would have the whole church like Jump the back. pastor wouldn't even preach that day. Oh, if okay, I am okay. praise dancing, I can make the whole church shout for two hours. So I used to praise dance and I was a cheerleader. Mm -hmm. Um, I did some other sports and and stuff like that but then I was a cheerleading coach so I was always very like coordinated when it came to music and all of that type of stuff music dance the arts was just my thing like I can probably act if I wanted to I can do whatever the fuck just teach me that's how I enter yeah and then from that point with music career are you feeling like the early um support like you got the social media following friends family like is it there yet or they just you know still waiting to see what you do with it um, the family is definitely there. Um, my family know who I am as a person. Um, even though my family is in the church, they know like when they listen to what my hoes, that's just Kiki. Like Kiki, mm -hmm. that's just who she is. So, um, my first performance, like I think I had fifty to sixty of my family members show up. I'm oh, talking about cousins, aunts uncles all of that i only had like one or two people say you know like you have a daughter so you want to be careful with what you know you do and don't say and my thing is is you know me being a rapper is an aspect of who i am but it's not who i am as a parent yeah. um if anybody know me or follow any of my social medias they will see that i'm very nurturing caring with my daughter she's very intelligent i'm very hands-on with her so me saying where my holes at does not it does not intermingle with my ideals as a parent gotcha. so um i did have some people try to stir me differently but it's like thank you for your opinion but shut the fuck up because i didn't fucking ask you we we ain't ask no questions. <laughs> we ain't ask no questions. I ain't come for no guidance. Type Correct. Yeah. If you want me to be Lupe Fiasco, you got the wrong bitch. You can go <laughs> ahead and you can you can go make your own music. If it, my thing is, I'm making music for who, whoever Ooh, the fuck like it. Like it. Yeah. That's it. Everybody ain't gonna like my music. That's mine. Yeah. Some people might think it's trash, stupid, dumb, it's whatever. But I feel like that about some people's music. And guess what? They still striving. So whoever like it, I fuck with you. And if you don't like it, then thank you. Don't listen. So there weren't too many pushback from the family being that they're heavily in church? No, no. I got a message from my mom right now. Hold on. I, oh, you know what? See, the world can't even see this. See. Hold on. This is my cousin. I swear my cousin literally called me. Hey. Hey. Okay. 
I'm on a show. They want to know, do y'all support me as a family with my music? Hey, yeah. hey, hey, how y'all feel, feel about my music? <laughs> I got a part of that. We feel that vibe. Love you. But yes, um, I don't know how that just happened, but I swear, I swear to God, literally, my mom just texted me. So, so proud of you. Literally, before I just got here. Um, my partner, my daughter's father, he literally texted me last night. He said, Keep working. I'm proud of you. I know everything you do is for us and our child. Keep grinding. That's love, man. So everybody, whether I'm shaking my ass, maybe the nipples may slip or whatever, my family is there supporting me tooth and nail. So. What, what does that do for you? Like, does it keep you like motivated? Sometimes you may feel kind of like low on it. So it definitely keep me motivated because with the music thing, it is um, some growing pains. I'm with a new label, so everything is new. They're not already established, so. You know, we're all learning, we're all growing, and sometimes I get frustrated, sometimes they get frustrated, and it's times I be like, you know what, fuck this, like, I don't give a fuck, because I, I won't even perform tomorrow, <laughs> like, I don't give a damn, my hair not done, like, I don't know what the fuck I'm wearing, but you know, knowing that my, my family be like, what time we need to meet up, what time we going, when the next time, it's like knowing that they're waiting and they're anticipating it gives me that boost, it really does, because I swear I be want to be like, listen, I got a good job, I'm smart. I don't need this music shit. But their motivation definitely helps me. It definitely propels me forward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you like, whenever when everything pops, are you looking forward to being like a celebrity, like out in the spotlight? Or listen, the best way for me to put it is, I feel like what's for me is for me. Like I don't necessarily have any. I don't necessarily want to say like. I am going to be a celebrity or I am mm -hmm. going to be the next whoever, whoever, because that may not be my life path. Okay. Like, I don't really so much live my life like that. I I have goals and I have aspirations, but I just feel like what's going to be going to be. If I'm going to be a celebrity, then that's what the fuck it's going to be. If I'm going to be a one hit wonder, then bitch, let me hit one time and let me get the fuck mm -hmm. on about my business. So I'm more so like very open minded to whatever's going to happen. It's going to happen and I'm just going to be ready for it. Okay. Yeah. And you said uh, Gigi's Gigi, favorite rapper. I love Gigi. Gigi. Favorite project? Oh my gosh. Um, I like Can't Ban the Snowman. I like um, The Recession. Okay. I like The Motivation okay. 101. Like, I love him. I love him to death. But I do have other favorite rappers too, but I would say like he's probably one of my favorites. Who else? Who else? I love Webby, even though Webby is so old, but like, I love Webby. I, I like his personality and I love the way he like, I like the way he rap, I like his music. Mm -hmm. Um, I did like Trick Daddy. These are all people that I kind of like grew up yeah, listening yeah. to. I'm so old, like, I would <laughs> listen to Webby and Jeezy and all those people like right now today, like. I mean, it's time, it's music a lot of times. Yes, yeah. like I do like the new rappers and stuff, but the older rappers, my cousin tell me all the time, you know it's new music out, and I be like, don't give a fuck. <laughs> like, put it on Jeezy. I like Plies, I love Plies. I love like all the niggas, and um, I feel like, you know, it's time to have more female representation in the rap world. Okay. I feel like it's a lot of gatekeeping yeah, we'll when it comes to that. rap, okay. and um, you know, they, they quit to let a white nigga in, a Spanish nigga in, like all these different niggas, but like y'all won't let a hoe in. And as soon as a hoe talk about pussy getting fucked dick, then it's like, oh, you can't talk about that. Bitch, yes, I can. Okay. I so, fucking, I fuck dick. So, so let's let's talk about it, because you say it's gatekeeping, but I kind of feel like it's the women holding women back when it comes to like getting into the rap game, because you know, you have like, of course, Nicki Minaj, she's been running it for a while. You yeah. Got Cardi B's. City Girls and different, like, Megan Thee Stallion, different female artists coming out. But then after a while, you get to, like, maybe the, cancel the City Girls or cancel this person. Uh, yeah. Uh, cancel Mulatto or cancel yeah. Courtney Ray. So, and it's not the guys. It's not coming from the guys. Yeah. I, feel like, I feel like it's coming from, like, the women. So kind of, yeah. kind of speak on, like, what you think about that and what you think it will take for, like, that to kind of stop. Honestly, I don't think it'll ever stop because a bitch gonna be a bitch at the end of the day. Like if you, I feel like it has to do one with the with the people. Like if people just some hate haters, they're gonna be that. Like That's they're it. gonna find something to hate on. Um. Also, too, I feel like 
you know, women just got to come together and be more united. But I think it, it has a lot to do with being an individual, like not being comfortable with themselves. Because I can be in a room full of women I never, ever met before. And you would think we all cousins versus like if I wasn't there, you will see like women standing here, women standing there. Like they not op they not really open minded to other people. They always have their guards up. It could be from their upbringing, you know, being hurt. As I don't know what the fuck it is, but you hoes need to start loving each other because if we don't love each other as women, like how do you expect these niggas to even respect us? Like we can't even be one as a unit. Like niggas always got niggas back, mm -hmm. but it's like hoes don't never have each and other. I feel back. like even with the male rappers, like if it comes down to talent, you know, some people say, "Oh, this person trash. I don't like her music." Even with the male rappers, if a male rapper is trash, he's just like trash, but he's making music, putting it out, and people either mess with it or they don't, and they have a career. Right. But when a female rapper, you know, they may come out, they say something that other females may not like, or right. they have music that other females may not like. It's like, oh, get her out of here. Yeah. We only want Nikki. We only want this. We only want that. Yeah. And it, like, just leaves those few just yeah. to make music and everybody else is in the back. I feel like people don't care what the fuck women rap about. They want them to shut the fuck up. Um, Like, you have conscious female rappers out there, and they don't even got as much... They're not on the Attention. same platform as Cardi or City Girls or yeah. Mulatto or whatever. Because mm -hmm. it's like, what the fuck y'all rapping about? Like, don't nobody want to hear that? Show a titty, show a ass. And then it's like, when women do rap about that, it's like, that's all you going to rap about are your, is your private part. So I feel like, damn if you do, damn if you don't. Just do it. I feel like when it comes to female rap, like you said earlier, men don't support female rap as much. Yeah. And when a female turns on a female rapper, that's your audience going away. Yeah. So it's like the, the 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 conscious female rappers we don't really listen to. I yeah. mean, not me personally, but men don't really me listen neither. to. Them. And then they don't really listen. <laughs> just don't pay the pay the the and then we we're not trying to hear the you know the shake the ass and all yeah. that type of stuff. So if, if a female the female audience turn on you, then it's kind of like what's left. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie to y'all, and I can pull it out on my phone. My biggest audience come from men. Seventy percent of my audience is men, not even women. But you're a little different from what I see. Yeah, I am a little yeah, different. Yeah, little different. I am a little different. Um, I don't know. I think people, I think women or people, the female rappers, like, they too busy trying to be on their chest. Like, we have all been influenced by somebody. Mm -hmm. Like, Nikki, you were influenced by somebody. Cardi, you was influenced by somebody. Mm -hmm. City Girls, you was influenced by somebody. Same for Mulatto and whoever else. Mm -hmm. uh, Megan Thee Stallion, whatever other female rappers we have. Like, why the fuck can't we just be all one? Now, I think other stuff be happening in the background yeah. that we don't know yeah. about. But, you know, some women probably just are nasty people. You know, they probably not really friendly or stuff like that. And that's where tensions and stuff like that fly. But as far as I know, mark my words today, I would never like be beefing with no bitch. I don't care what level of celebrity that I get because I got too much love going on. Like, if you don't like me, fine, but I'm not going to be doing that with you. Like, love you, but feel how you feel, and we're going to let that be. Has that always been the case with you, or you had to mature to that? I have, al I have always been that way. Like, I don't know why am I that way. I can't hold a grudge. I can't do none of that. Now, uh, you know what? I'm very upfront. I am very upfront. Like, you're going to know how I feel. I'm, I am emotionally intelligent, but if you do something or say something I don't like, I'm going to signal to you some kind of way I don't like that shit. I may be mad for five minutes, but I ain't going to hold it against you. If anything, I may move a little different. I may feel like, damn, I thought we fucked with each other, but we don't really, we don't fuck with each other how I thought, so I'm going to just, like, keep my space. But ain't no love lost, but fuck you. Fuck you, but I love you, but fuck you. Like that. That may just be your personality, but do you feel like growing up in the church and the church background help with that a little bit? Like the forgiving oh, aspect. That is me. That may just be who you are. I would say no. Do, do you know why I would say no? Because I know people in the church that are very Facts. fucking nasty. Yes. Um, people that have served as deacons, that read the announcements, did the goddamn offering, the um pastors, pastors, helpers, like they're not very nice people. The thing yeah. of it is, people try to be nice. You can't be you have to be kind. Kind comes from with inside. Yeah. I, to me, being nice is like, be nice, like people are here. I don't have to do that because I'm, I'm just going to be me. I'm just going to either you going to fuck with me or you ain't. Because everybody has their own version of kindness. Correct. That's, yeah. Correct. So I feel like it's more of like who I am because I've been to some church with, I have been to church with people that I feel like are nasty as fuck. Mm -hmm. 
you know, when they still go to church, they go to church every Sunday. I don't, I don't really go to church too much like that anymore, mm -hmm. but I feel like my kindness is more so rooted within versus learning a doctrine. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, it's like, sidebar on that real quick, like, yeah. could you, or have you experienced like, um, and we've had like certain like pastors and stuff getting caught up with, you know, uh, or spiritual leaders getting caught up with cheating or things mm -hmm. like that, or, you know, not being honest. Could you like be a part of a congregation where like a pastor has cheated on his wife multiple times, or you just feel like they're human? They can like, like just get your opinion on it real quick. Yes, I feel like we are all human. We we are all human, and I feel like that's something that the congregation has to understand. And that's something that also the pastor has to understand as well. Number one, you have to portray yourself. I feel like people just gotta start. Just be human. Just be human for a change, yeah, right? Don't try to portray, exactly. you know, you can portray yourself as whatever the fuck you want to, but don't try to portray yourself as holier than thou. And then when you fuck up, then, you know, now everybody is shocked. Yeah. yeah. Everybody in shock. Like, you have to come to the people as if you are a real person. I am here to preach the gospel. I am opening up a book. I'm teaching you the doctrine, knowledge. I'm bestowing it upon y'all. And that's that. When we leave, I am feeling human. I still have to go to work. I still have to deal with ups and downs and things like that. And I think they uphold this particular view of people in the church. And when things happen, when cheating happens or cursing or abuse or whatever the case may be, drinking, it is very appalling for the congregation because they start idolizing those people. Mm -hmm. And that's on the fault of both the congregation and mm -hmm. the pastor because the church is supposed to be looking at God. When it comes to Christianity, we don't have that many gods. We got one. So why the fuck is you looking at this man like he's a God? He's, he's like a human. Mm -hmm. He's a human. So if he happened to cheat on his wife, maybe y'all know why niggas cheat. He's a mm -hmm. nigga. Like, stop acting. Stop acting like be human for a change and let that be that. But you know, when it comes to that spiritual stuff, people are very, very touchy. Yeah. So it's like, it's something that you can and or cannot speak on, depending on how open-minded the person is. And a lot of Christians are not open-minded. They only see this and this only. They can't look at things on a wider scope. Yeah. So, yeah, I just leave that at that. But I have heard things in the church, and it's like, oh, okay. Like, what are you supposed to do? Yeah. yeah, like, if his wife don't want to fuck, what he supposed to do? <laughs> a man ain't going to jack off but too long. Like, come on now. And look at your hat. That means sick of seeing that motherfucking hat with them pearls so on it. Check it out. Yeah, Do it something new. So, yeah, that's how I feel about it. All right. Now, we got, like, different things going on in entertainment and stuff. Have you been, like, paying attention to, like, um the upcoming Bow Wow versus Soulja Boy versus? I heard about it. I you, heard like, about you it. You familiar with their music? Like, the yeah, yeah. Yeah. Listen, okay. when Bow Wow first came out, like, Bow Wow was my husband. Yeah. Like, yeah, I people. was in that era where Bow Wow was like my husband. Um, mm -hmm. not so much Soldier Boy. I think Soldier Boy probably came out. Yeah, oh five. Yeah, so I was in high school because I graduated in 07. So mm -hmm. I more so grew up on Bow Wow and then kind of learned Soldier Boy, but yeah. Okay, so you you pretty sure in the versus Bow Wow, Bow Wow got that. Um, listen, I seen something Bow Wow recently tweeted or posted and it made me so disgusted with him. So with that being said, are you like, talking about even, with um his new baby mama? Yes, that that is okay. so insensitive okay. to me. That okay, is so, okay, so disgusting. I'm not the most up on to like the gospel stuff. I'm like, God, I'm not yeah. gonna dive deep into it, but it seemed like they met. You know, they didn't really know each other, and you know, a baby she came out home. of it. A baby yeah. cat. <laughs> she was being home, and um, yeah, the baby is born, and maybe she's going through some some type of postpartum. Yeah. depression or issues and yeah. maybe he's not you know being too caring about it yeah and then when he spoke on it he was like um he i barely like, know her we don't got no pictures together you know she's just doing doing too much and so that's that's a turnoff for you that's that a, that's a big turnoff for me even Number even one, if he's taking care of the kid you feel like it's a turnoff because there was never a relationship there that's some fuck nigga shit. For, for one this is how okay. i feel whether d depending on how he treat her in the background, fine. But like you posting that, why are you posting that? Like okay. for me, that's a fuck nigga move. Okay, okay. Like you are showing you are very insensitive, uncaring, that you are dismissive. It is so many things in that tweet that can be unfolded and unpacked. Where it's like you doing too much. Number fucking one, you a grown ass man. If you got yeah. a baby by her, you fucked her, you did whatever, fine. But like, why are you do? Why are you posting that? I don't. I don't understand it. That's why she's going through what she's going through. Correct. But, but, she is the mother of your child. But but, that, but then again, to, to play devil's advocate, 
she did, you know, put it out into the limelight first. Yes, because bitch, you got me motherfucking pregnant. I'm having this fucking baby. I don't give a fuck if it was one night, two night, five nights. If you met her for one night, why the fuck did you fuck her raw and fucking nut in her? Be a motherfucking responsible man. You got other kids. You know how biology works. Don't do that. If you know that you out here fucking groupie hoes, strippers, whoever the fuck, then you do what the fuck you supposed to do. You are a celebrity. Y'all need to, these niggas, these celebrity niggas for sure need to know what the fuck they doing when they coming across hoes, whether they trying to come up on a come up or whatever. Well, I keep trying to tell these niggas, a bitch cannot trap you because a bitch is not taking your dick, cutting it off, putting it in a pussy and nothing in there. You are getting on top of these hoes and you're fucking them in and out, in and out until you nut and you're nutting in them. And now you're talking about, oh, I don't even got no pictures with the hoe. Bitch, you don't need no pictures with me. This child is yours. The DNA is there. And we all know the person that you had the most fun with, you rarely have pictures with. Because you'll be too busy having a lot of, yeah. having fun. So what the fuck does a picture validate? <laughs> what does it validate? Like, for me, I feel like at the end of the day, if you are the child's father, do what the fuck you need to do. And even if you're not with the girl, like, that, I feel like that didn't need to be posted. Like, let hoes do hoe shit. I feel like niggas should never do no, a real nigga ain't gonna never do no hoe shit. And I feel like that's a whole yeah. move. Posting that, like, let her tweet, let her say whatever the fuck she gonna say. But I feel like a real nigga don't even entertain yeah. social media like that. Gotcha, gotcha. That's just how I feel. I feel like it's a lame ass fuck nigga, pussy ass move. Can't hit you with a combination. Ass fuck nigga. But I fuck with Bow Wow, but. No, no, he, he is a legend. Out here, you know, sometimes, sometimes he just do like corny stuff, you know. And it's probably because he's been famous his whole life, like, really since five. But, you know, yeah, I get what you're saying. I, I was just saying. like, really, yeah, Bow Wow? Like, I was more. Because now I look, you know, sometimes you look at celebrities like family kind of a little bit. Like, you know, like when Michael Jackson died, a lot of people yeah, cried because yeah, it was yeah. like, that was like their cousin or their uncle or their long lost friend or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I don't see Bow Wow in that respect, but like, I feel like I kind of knew him a little yeah, better. I grew up on him, so I never would expect him to say something so insensitive, gotcha. especially about something that a lot of women go oh, through. Yeah. You know, a lot of women go through that even if they marry, even yeah. if they, you know, have a successful marriage, they have a good job, a good home. A lot of women go through that. Postpartum. So with postpartum, yeah. I personally didn't, I don't know why, or I probably did and don't really even Thank fucking you. know I, you know because i look at stuff on the positive side but what i'm learning is that a lot of women go through postpartum so to know that her situation is with a celebrity somebody that's disclaiming her probably disclaiming the baby i don't fucking know and then putting that on there it's like you making matters worse why why and you have a daughter that you're always posting like why do that gotcha. why do it gotcha. that's how i feel now when it comes to like your twitter and social media yes yeah. There, there's, some, there's some things that stuck out. I, 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 no, I, before, you, before you get into that. Ah, I created a segment just for you. I, I, I was on your Twitter. I was on your Twitter, and I was, I was looking through. Okay, before you say it, you know. Go 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 no, I'm leaving. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. We're not, we not doing our job. No, we're not. Talk about it. Let's mm -hmm. talk about it. I just want to know, like, because, you know, this social media, you can't really take everything for real, for real. You yeah. Know, pretend to know somebody, so... I want to know, like, what's trolling or, like, which, you know, how much, how much of it, yeah. before we get to it, how much of it is trolling? It's like, okay, this is actually my real yeah. opinion. Like, what's the, what's the ratio? I would say about 95% of it is real. 5% of it is me, like, bullshit. And a lot of people think I be trolling, but I be dead ass I kind of get that fucking sense. serious. I, I think it's just my delivery. Mm -hmm. Or, like, people don't expect me to say it. Like, a lot of people think my page is a fake page. I said, why would y'all think my page is I post myself. I post my daughter. Like, I post me in so many different spaces. How could y'all think it's a fake page? But I think it's more. I think what the thing is is that I say a lot of things that people won't necessarily say. Okay. So, it's looked at like trolling, but a lot of the times I don't be trolling. Okay. So, do you want to, or should I? <laughs> no, I, 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 have a, I have a couple. I'm going to put a double team. All right. All right. Come on, come on, bring it. Okay. So, like I said, this is the first time we ever did it. This is just for you. <laughs> Depends on how this goes, we might continue with it. So, this is yes. tweet yeah. right now. In, inauguration. Right. Yeah, there we go. All right. All right. So, I'm going to read off the tweet and I want you to elaborate. Okay. 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 All right. First one says Everyone should fuck at least one man that knows how to change a tire. Elaborate. Okay. Um. One thing I want to say before we before we get into it, a lot of my tweets are inspired by some of the things that I see on the timeline. Okay. So if y'all ever been on my page, you will see a lot of times my tweets will kind of like jump from random. one thing. Yeah, it'll be very random. It's because 
a lot of my tweets, if I'm if I'm on the timeline and I see somebody say, damn, my tire flat, like I gotta call AAA. I will then in turn tweet something and say, you should be at fucking at least one man that know how to change your tire. You telling me you fucking somebody and he don't know how to change a fucking tire. Now these days, of course, you don't really need to fuck a man that know how to change your tire because I'm gonna call AAA on my insurance or whatever. But if it came down to it, it, down to it the nigga you fucking can't change no tire. Like, come on, man. So yes, I mean that. That was one that I meant. All right, to piggyback off that. I hear a lot of women saying that they need their man to be handy, cutting grass, uh, changing, like painting the house, doing roofing, <laughs> all type of crazy. All type of arts and crafts and shit. Do you need no. that? It does that? Is that no. a. You no, know, you don't need that. All my men need to know how to do Cut a check. No. Oh, I'm sorry. He need to know. He need to definitely oh, okay. do that. He can't even be my man if he's not doing that. But what, what I love to see a man do is cook and wash motherfucking dishes i love to like see a man's thought process like like i like to see them like if they gonna take the meat out first like they onions like cutting it like how you finna cut it like yeah, oh my god i love it in that strong ass arm like going in a refrigerator yeah. it's like that to me is just so oh my god and i think i really like it too because a lot of men like don't cook so it's so something it's like, different okay, and it's okay, something okay. special that yeah. Like if a man no can cook and know how to and enjoy it, so I think that's what I enjoy the most about it because I can cook, but just to see a man do it is just I love it. Like that okay. is okay. that right there. But as far as the other stuff, like we can call him on man, we can call like you don't have to know how to really do that. Just at least know how to like hang some shit. Yeah, okay. do the basic the shit. Basic, I don't need don't to come out. Together. I can't hang this like uh, bitch. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. yeah, so. Yeah, that's why I am. Right. No, I got it, but you're going. Okay. No, but the one I'm about to bring up, I know it touched your heart. All oh, right, do that one now. Do that one now. <laughs> <laughs> I think okay. talking about, do that one now. Okay. Y'all, okay. okay. they, right. they ain't right. Don't come <laughs> on this show unless you want to get. No, but that, the one we're talking about, we had a connection before we even met, type of thing. Okay, okay, okay yeah. 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 Okay. All right, so this one. If your man, if your man get about, if your man get another bitch pregnant, do you really want them to come home and tell you? Oh no, please don't tell me that. Please don't tell me that. That's between you and that hoe and that shit should be gone as far as I'm concerned. Me personally, please don't tell me shit you got going on. Whatever you're gonna do, keep that shit in the fucking streets. I don't need to know that because if, if you tell me I'm probably gonna kill you or do something irrational, like no, you ain't asked me to fuck the hoe. You ain't asked me to get her number. So keep me out of it. Now a lot of women they like to be in the know. Like just tell me, just so, so that's you really how you don't want to know. Some, 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 some women would say that, but you really don't want to. I don't want to know. Kill that bitch. Kill that bitch. Make that hoe take a plan B. Make her get an abortion. But please <laughs> do not get her. If you get her pregnant, don't tell me. And that baby should not be coming into this world. All right. If it does come into the world, what's what's next? But you don't know though. You don't know though. He, he right, you find out. All right, maybe just say you do find out. Like. Seven, eight years down the line, the baby's in middle, almost in middle school. You find out. Ooh. Does that does that hurt anything that that y'all built over the years? Yeah, and he's he been a good nigga to you though. Great. Take care you, of your you, family, you, your you, kids. You ain't no, but you ain't no. Cook way. for you to arm going in the refrigerator. If he doing all that, he won't be in the next bitch pussy. In my, in, in my opinion, <laughs> a, a nigga that a nigga that is taking care of me the way I want to be taken care of. He may or may not be fucking other bitch. I, I'm going to tell y'all something. I don't know if I'm just different, but I really don't want to... I really don't want to be my man only happiness, if that makes sense. Like, yeah, like bitch, please don't let me cook for you every night. Like, let that other hoe do it. Let that other hoe do it tonight or something. But don't let me know. Maybe maybe if we're going through a rough, rough patch. Maybe you're going to fuck on another whole fine. Like, I, I, for me, I feel like it's so unrealistic to be tied down to somebody for 50 years, 60 years, 70 years and only fuck that one dick or only fuck that one pussy. I feel like that's, that's unheard of. And I feel like if any of y'all ever talk to y'all motherfucking grandparents that be talking about, oh, love ain't the way it used to be. Trust me. It's some shit that y'all don't fucking know. The, the, your grandma is not the only person that your granddad has fucked. And same for your grandmother. If he not the only person that she has fucked. So I feel like whatever you're going to do, keep it in the streets. Be smart enough to keep it in the streets and don't let me find out. 
and that's it. You made my mouth dry. Okay, so it's okay if they have something on the side. Just don't be disrespectful with it. I see. I'm not necessarily saying. We, we we talked about this on the, on the podcast before. Yeah. It's something called respectful cheating and disrespectful cheating. Yes, it is. It okay. is, and people see, people, people like to say. Yeah, they, 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 all them people are dumb. They are so they, dumb. They, they try to the be so, they don't know the game. so morally per- correct, politically it's correct. Respectful and disrespectful. Correct. Like, don't bring the bitch to, to, to the bed, to the house, and all that. Her car. Yes, don't, correct. Don't do that. Correct. Don't do that. correct. Correct. Yeah. Don't let that bitch step out of line, all that. Like, for me, respectful cheating is if a woman is cheating, the nigga not knowing, and if a Trust nigga cheating, the whole not knowing. That's what respectful cheating is to me. When it gets sloppy and all out of hand, that's when things get You just don't care. Like, you don't care about my you feelings. Don't you don't care about getting caught. You don't keep care. her in line. Go keep her or him in line. Correct, correct. Yeah. But when it step out of line, then you must love the hoe or something. So that's why I'm going to get hurt. And that's why I'm going to feel like I got to kill you. Because why the fuck is this hoe, like, posting, like, your arm on her page? Bitch, okay. I know your arm. I know the way your knuckle looks. Okay. Like, so, yeah. But I'm not necessarily... Promoting saying, it. Yeah, I'm not saying like I want my nigga to cheat on me or please cheat on me, but I'm saying if it does happen, keep keep that to yourself. Like right. please don't come home and be like, Oh babe. Because this ain't no lifetime shit. I'm I'm not open minded to that shit. I'm not finna have no uncomfortable conversation with you. I'm gonna run in your motherfucking shit. I'm gonna throw your shit like this shit is gonna be happening because I'm a human. I'm going to react naturally when I'm upset and or angry. <laughs> I know how to control myself, but in something that detrimental and or hurtful, when you with somebody and you being intimate and exclusive, mm-hmm. some action, some reactions may be beyond your control. That's what they call crime of passion and stuff like that. So, okay. yeah, if you're gonna do it, don't let me know. It's my last one. Okay. Your last. My one. last okay. one. Of the first tweet <laughs> breakdown of the Robert Woods podcast. All right, I. Yeah. If my man don't want to see me every day, I'm just a soul he's gay. Yeah. Why you don't want to see me every day, babe? Every day. Every single day. Yeah, every day. Seven days a week, even if it's just for an hour, or it got to be multiple hours every day. Like, I feel like my man should want to see me every day. That what? came from, that came as a response to somebody else's no, tweet, true. where he said, if a woman want me to see her every day, we're not going to work out. So and I feel you? like, if I'm oh, your yeah, bitch, yeah, yeah. if I'm your bitch, why the fuck you don't want to see me every day? Now, Things may arise like, babe, but I'm tired, like, oh, I gotta do this, or I'm gotta, whatever, like, yeah, that's fine, but you should still have a yearning okay, to want to see me every day. If it's just like, no, nah, I'm just, I don't want to <laughs> see you today. I just don't, I don't want to see you then, bitch. What the fuck okay. you got going on? Is you fucking another bitch or a nigga? What the okay, fuck? Okay, but if, talking about the same tweet, Zoe Dollars has said, he basically said that if he, if he's locked in, he's in the zone, you feel me? He's focused. She's making a face at me right now. Mm-hmm. She's kind of scared to say it. She, she's <laughs> focused know. and whatnot. And, um, you know, he may not have time, you know, to see you every day. Or, you know, he just want to stay to himself or, you know, not focus on certain things. If you want to stay to yourself, get the fuck out my face. Because you're not going to pick and choose when you want to fuck with me. See, my thing is that this is what I'm saying. We can talk on the phone. Like, yeah, you know, we can talk on the phone. We can talk on the phone. But today. that's what I'm saying. If you got if you got stuff going on, like, okay, babe, I got to do the podcast today. Like after that, I'm gonna go do basketball, whatever. Then you done with basketball. Like I'm tired. I'll see you tomorrow, whatever. Like I feel like that's different. That's okay. different. But just to be like, I don't want to see. You. Yeah, but just to be like, if okay. you want me to see you every day, then we not gonna work. Like, okay, bitch, okay, what the okay, fuck okay. do that even mean? Like, okay, who okay. even? Like, we, I feel like we're adults now. We not seventeen. Like, we should know how to maintain healthy relationships. Mm-hmm. Not to the confines of Twitter or what other people think, but for me, I feel like if I'm with a man, I want him to want to see me. Like, I want him to want to see me. And if we can't see each other every day because of unforeseen circumstances, or he's tired and he got an obligation, or I have an obligation, that's fine. But to just, like, tell my nigga, I don't want to see you today, or him, I don't want to see you today, or I don't got to see you every day, then why the fuck are we, what the fuck we doing? What the fuck are we really doing? So... Yeah, yes and no. Like a lot of my tweets, of course, they're, they're short. They're, they're short. It's mm-hmm. only a few characters you can tweet, but of course, there's logic that goes behind mm-hmm. it. Now, when I when I be saying you're gay, that's me like that's <laughs> me like playing around. Yeah, so I be yeah. like, if he don't eat your ass, like he gay that's or 5%. whatever. That's yeah, like I, yeah, that be the five percent. Yeah. But like. It, I do be meaning, I don't necessarily mean he gay, but I just be like, what the fuck? Right, Maybe, right. Yeah. Okay, this, that was going to be my last one, but... but you my got one, more, one more, one more. This one I was kind of confused. 
What? You said a man getting penetrated in the ass by a woman is not gay. Yeah, it's natural. I ain't even touched on that. Yeah, I wouldn't even touch on that, but you brought you like you all right, go ahead. Now me personally, I, I have never <laughs> <laughs> I have never um had anal sex like done anal sex women, but it's something that I would like to do. But men I feel like are not that open to it. Now I do I do mean what I said. I feel like okay, gay men suck each other dick. So I've heard. Yeah, so you heard. I watch gay porn, so yes, they do suck each other dick. I guess they got talk to me. <laughs> yeah, they do suck each other dick. So I feel like to say fucking a man in the ass is gay, then why is not sucking your dick gay? Fucking who did? Like a guy doing something? No, if a woman penetrates a, a man in the ass, I feel like whatever a man and a woman does together is not gay. Oh, that's what you mean. It is straight. Like, because you're doing it with a woman. Being... Being gay has to deal with who you are having sex Attractive with. People. Yes, the gender. That's why when they be saying, why do lesbians want penetration? Because it doesn't have anything to do with penetration. It got to do with my attraction to a woman. I'm attracted to a woman. That don't mean I don't want my coochie penetrated. That's what y'all have to understand. It's not about, it's not about necessarily... <laughs> See, y'all don't get it. But you can't say that. You make it sense. Gay women, like, make it sense. Make like, it gay sense. women don't just scissor and suck each other titties. Yep. There I'm is penetration in it. You're attracted to the person, you're saying. Yes, yeah. being gay is your attraction to the same sex. That is all being gay is. That's what being gay is. So, if you are attracted to me as a woman, and I'm, if I eat your ass, that does not make you gay. To me, that does not make a man gay. If you are do, if you only had sex with women all your life and you got your ass a all your life, how you gay? If you ain't never had sex with a man, if you have sex with women all your life and she probably put her finger or her pinky in your ass, how are you gay? You never ever had sex with a man. You only got your, you know, a little pinky in your ass, or you probably got your ass licked. I feel like every nigga should be getting their ass licked if it's a thorough head job because. You getting your dick sucked, you at the balls, you under the balls, why is the ass not being touched? But that's a whole nother subject. But mm -hmm. yeah, I feel like anything done between a man and a lady is natural. That's there, how I feel. Is there a such thing as a gay act, even though it's not with a gay person, like a, another same sex person? Because, uh, Keith, let's be honest, Keith. I, I, can't, have I, nothing, ain't nothing, I, I, nothing. Can't, I can't agree with that. I can't agree with that because. <laughs> Because from what I've heard, men that do like to get penetrated in their ass or something in their ass, that, like they like it and or enjoy it. Now, I don't know these men personally, but like from what I heard from other women that do do it or have done it, like the men enjoy it. So I feel like it's more so of, more of men protecting their masculinity and or defending their sex stance on being straight versus gay. But I feel like whatever you and your old lady doing in the bedroom, who the fuck? Cares. That's they better. Who the fuck knows? When y'all leave out that bitch, y'all don't know what y'all don't know what the fuck I have to me walking in here, y'all don't know if I don't had sex with a man, woman, ate an ass, yes or no. No matter what I told y'all, even if I say yeah, I ate a man ass, y'all don't know if I really have or not. So who fucking cares? If you want your ass ate, get it ate. If you want a finger in your shit, I feel like people just gotta be open enough, but they not comfortable with their partners how they say they are. Yeah. All bitches care about is going on a vacation. They not caring about like actually getting to know their nigga. That's why they be talking about what should I get my man for his birthday? Bitch, you suck his dick. You don't know what he like. Yeah, that's, so that's okay, it's though. just like you know, yeah. people gotta be more comfortable with their sexual partners. And I feel like that's what that's what it all boils down to. If the girl okay. think it's gay and the man think it's gay, then it's gay. If the girl don't think it's gay and the man don't think it's gay, then by all means, ram his shit. You know, but who knows? Nobody is, like nobody is gonna know. Don't say it like that. <laughs> ram it. I'm looking for somebody to ram. I want to like do that one time. I don't know why. Well, but um, all those who are out there, you know, you know. No, please. I want to. I want to meet him on my own. Do not come to my shit. Do not come to my inbox. I do not want to do a stranger. I want to do like a straight man, but it got to be somebody that I know, but not like my man, like somebody else. Why not your man? Like why? why no. Not? Is, um. There's nothing wrong. Because his food, his food not gonna taste the same way. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's just like I don't. I don't want to do my man. Same. I don't want to do my man. I want to do like somebody else's man. Like, girl, I be fucking your man in the ass. More so like So, that. so it is disrespectful. <laughs> no, <laughs> I guess. That's what I'm saying. Like, 
I guess you can say. I okay. Guess you can okay. Say. Yeah, that's probably it that probably is, but I don't know. I think I got I do like um I think I'm more like dominant. I'm more I'm very like dominant in the bed. So I think that's probably like why I like that or okay. whatever. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. All right. And to, to, to the final final tweet, I yes. wanted to, I know that you know, the icing on the cake. Icing on the cake. Uh you said now I don't know five percent, not the five percent. Ninety five. Okay. <laughs> you said um, you believe that men and women should wait. How it? long? Twenty years. Twenty years. Twenty years for what marriage. Before marriage. So. <sighs> no, no. I, I must say, he said on his podcast and in life, like he actually means it. He feel like men and women should wait at least ten years to get 10. married. 10 years to get married. So so how do you feel about like what's, what's your take on that? Honestly, I feel like I feel like marriage is not necessary. Um to have a happy, fruitful, and long relationship. I feel like the M word has it's like a brainwash word. Like a lot of different people have different ideals about it and what they consider a healthy marriage and stuff like that. I feel like if if you love somebody, marry them the first day you meet them. Marrying within the first three months, the first three weeks, like, why even wait? Why, why even wait? If you're going to wait, then why even get married? If I feel like if you've been happy 10 years without marriage, why do it? Just keep being happy. And I feel like if you love somebody, when the man get on his knee, get married the next day. Don't wait a year. Don't do all of that. But ultimately, at the end of the day, I feel like marriage is not necessary. Long as I feel like marriage takes place way below the marriage way before the marriage happens. I feel like you have to be married to your partner before that Mentally, man says, yeah, yes, before yeah, that man exactly. says, will you marry me? And I feel marry like me. a woman has to be already married to that man too before she says yes. It's, especially mm. like in this like climate, like a lot of females feel like, oh, wifely duties, I don't gotta show that until I, got, I don't have a ring and things like that. I'm like, how you expect that man to know how you even come in if you don't even show him a little something, like he's just supposed to just give you a ring and then hope you can just do certain yeah. things that you know he expects you to do as his future wife. So I get what, you, I get what you're saying. Yeah. That. I, mm -hmm. But you know what? There, it's so many different scenarios. Yeah. Like you can't really, it, I feel like there's no blanket, there's mm -hmm. no blanket sure. thing when it comes to marriage. I feel like if y'all together, I feel like you can either grow into your marriage or already have something established and then get married. A lot of men feel like, you know, they have to know a woman. They got to be fucking them for five years or whatever before they consider them for marriage. For me, I feel like the moment you know that you want to keep fucking this bitch, go ahead and do it. But at the same time, women, they like put a lot of pressure on men when it comes to marriage. Or like you say, the wifely duties. Like, what the fuck is wifely duties? What the fuck is it? I mean, it varies from person to person. I feel like whatever you expect your wife or your husband, husband duties to do, like, is that it? Like, some some guys nowadays may not, you know, care if their, you know, wife, you know, cooks, but they may want to clean house, you feel me? So, it's whatever that person, you know, it varies from person to person. It, it, it definitely does vary from per person to person, because as of me and the men that I've been with since 2009, like, it's more of a partnership, and I think that's how people should look at relationships. Um, you know, some people have their gender roles. It, like I said, it all depends on the couple because some couples believe heavily in gender roles. Like the man should be outside mowing, doing this, doing that, and the woman should be inside raising the kids, doing whatever. As for me and <laughs> oh the person God. that I'm with, it's more of a partnership. It ain't really who the fuck job it is or ain't like, bitch, if the trash, if we playing Tetris with the trash, dump that motherfucker. Like, and you know what? At one point, I did used to be like that. Like, bitch, I ain't dumping no motherfucking trash. But if he at work or he outside washing the car, why, not not, why, yeah. am, I, why am I looking at the trash getting mad? Go dump the shit, bitch. Like, don't be don't be like that. If he see a dish and now wash the shit. Don't be waiting on me. Don't be talking about, I'm waiting to see when this bitch gonna wash the dish. Wash the dish. You yeah, have man. noticed it. Watch it. Yeah, if you if the child diaper need change, don't be oh I did it. Like, it should be like always a partnership because you helping me, I'm helping you. We making each other's life easier. And I feel like people don't really look at relationships that way. And that's why it be a lot of complications because it's like you not doing what you supposed to do as a man, or you not doing what you supposed to do as a woman. When it's like 
yes, you are a man. Yes, you are a woman. But like, bitch, we can both get out here and rake these fucking leaves. Or we can both be out Perfect. here like cleaning up. Like Perfect. I can be working in the back. You can be working in. You can clean the bathrooms. I can clean the rooms. We both got to make the bed up together. Like, be learn to be partners. Learn each other. Grow with each other. And y'all, I feel like when people learn each other, they will have a more fruitful and healthier relationship. Yeah, and they will be on that's track that's with their marriage timeline. Like the girl won't be pressuring the man and the man won't be pressuring the girl. Cause Cause it's going to happen so naturally yeah. and organically. It ain't even going to be no ultimatum type shit. So whatever I said to the 20 years, I don't even know what they, I remember that was like a few weeks ago or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I do mean it, but I don't mean it. Gotcha. And right before we wrap up, there's a false narrative that a relationship should be 50-50. A relationship will never be 50-50 because mm -hmm. you might be going through a certain phase in your life, whether it's work, where you won't be able to provide as much to the relationship. That's where your partner picks up. So it may be 60-40, it may be 70-30, but you can't put a number. It has to be 50-50. If there's something that needs to be done, you step up, you do it, whatever. And then you know, it might be the man who might be chilling for a couple of months. If you're the one active, he has to step up. So there's no such thing as a 50-50. I, com I completely agree 100%. I feel like whatever slack I have, he pick up, and whatever slack he have, I pick up. Yeah. And sometimes we both be too tired. Can't no slack be yeah, picked yeah. up. She just slack get fucked up. Yeah. Yo, she just get fucked up. We'll worry about it later. But mm -hmm. I think people should definitely, you know, be more of a partner to their partner. And that's why I, always, I use the term partner a lot. And sometimes people be like, when I say partner, they think I'm like gay. Yeah. They be like, partner? And it's like, no, like, because that's who he is to me. Yeah, that's who he that's is real. to me. He he is he is truly my partner because we partner in everything that we do. It's like a business. It's like a business. It's a partnership. Living life, your life is a business. Every decision that you make, every relationship that you have, networking, all that stuff is a business. And if you don't run it as such, then you're going to have some failed businesses. Okay, okay. And right before we um go ahead and end up, Mm -hmm. let, let people know what you got coming. You got music videos and music about the job. Let them know what's going on with you. Yes, I do have a new single coming out June 1st. It's featuring Erica Banks. Erica Banks um, okay. went viral yeah. a few months ago mm -hmm. with the uh, Busted Bucket. Challenge yeah. where the ladies will look like straggly. Actually, and I did see that. How, how did it happen? Like, I don't know how it happened. I think it just like caught fire. Maybe like a big influencer did it, and then like no, no, I, know, I mean like you and Erica Banks, you know, making a song. Oh, okay. So. Um, so you were saying um how you and Erica Banks came together on the song? Yes. Um, I have about ten songs that are already ready. Mm -hmm. Um, and during the project, they asked me, you know, how would I feel about doing features, and I was like just launch the shit because honestly i want to like have my own fan base like i want to see who my fan base is um so they said okay well we have a few different people that we're thinking about selecting for a feature um and erica banks was one of the names and i was like yeah i would i would love to i would love to work with another woman somebody that's already like out there in the music industry so um, they reached out to her and she agreed to it. So we sent her the track. It was already complete. And um, she put her stuff on there and I heard it back and I like, I got goosebumps a little bit. I was like, what the freak? Like I actually have a song with Erica Banks. And you know, she may not be Cardi B or whoever, she's but to me, she's on the come up. She, yeah, yeah. she on her grind. She doing what the fuck she got to do. And she where I'm trying to be at. So shit, to me, it was a blessing. So I was very thankful. And um, after we got the song, they said, um, like we were tweaking the song and stuff like that and they said are you ready to do a music video so I was like a music video I was like but don't we have to like have Erica in it they was like yeah we gonna fly her out and all that so she ended up coming oh. down we shot the video um, we shot it all in one day from 6 in the morning listen the stuff behind the scenes is Not so it, we took two days the first day we shot like for the single cover mm -hmm. I did some shots and stuff too that took like a few hours then we had to be we didn't leave the studio till about 11 12 o'clock at night then we had to be up at six o'clock the next morning at the same studio recording and stopping and going and doing hair and makeup and this and that then changing yeah. rushing to miami is hot it's, it was a lot of stuff but yes i do have a song i said all that to say 
<laughs> I do have a new single coming out June 1st. It's called Shake. And it's just a feel-good song. It's a song just for women. I'm the more so telling women to like have fun. Like when I go to the club, I swear, I walk in the club like this, I be like, hey, <laughs> but you know, like other girls just be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, standing on the wall. Maybe. I be all mm -hmm. like, because I don't care who's here, I'm here to have a good time. Sorry to be getting up at night. No, 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 no. Do you? Like when I go to the club, I'm gonna have a good time. Like, let's vibe. That's what so, you're there for. Yes, that's what I'm there for. And I feel like women come to the club and just be like, yeah. and it's like, girl, have shake. fun. Yeah, shake. shake. So that's that's what I want women to feel when they hear this song. Like, who do we don't care who looking? We don't care what hoes in here. We don't care what niggas in here. We came out tonight because we had a long week with work, with school, mm -hmm. with our men, with our parents, with our siblings, kids, all that. We here to have a good time. Let's shake some. And um, we came up with the dance because you know the dance um, challenges are very yeah, uh, popular, popular right now, and it's pushing a lot of songs like the Runner Track Star song, mm -hmm. a lot of Megan songs, yeah. um, Cardi B the Up If It Sucks song, also. Um, you know, just different little yeah, songs out there. So, right yes, I felt like a good way to propel the song would be to like make it go to like a little eight count or whatever. That way, if people didn't really like the song, they'll at yeah, least do the challenge. Yeah, 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 do the challenge. If you don't like the song, still do the challenge. And I feel like it's a very little easy dance to learn. So, that's where we at with that. And then I think a week later, we're going to drop the video. And some months down the line, we're going to drop the project. I don't know when that's going to be, but be with the music industry, it's like, you be doing all this stuff and you want to show people and tell people yeah. like this is not the only because I be wanting people to know like this is not the only type of music I make. Like mm -hmm. I got some thug ass music now, mm -hmm. but it's like people can't hear it. It got to be coded. You got to find this. You got to find that. Like it's so official. Yeah. I, that's the only thing I hate about it. Mm -hmm. Like I got the trailer to the music video and I can't even show nobody. It's like. Please, can yeah. I show somebody? But they like, no, you know, you gotta like keep things under wrap. That's how stuff get leaked, yeah, yeah. and you know, you we just yeah. never really know. We yeah. don't know if this gonna be like the next sensation or what. So mm -hmm. they trying to protect it. Yeah. And it seems like your label slash management is doing something right because to you not to you know just be starting off and they put you on the um song with Erica Banks and. I'm not sure if you know that's her her label, her management is the people that work to make the stallion in the beginning of her career. Oh wow. So yeah, so you know, now they transition into her, they got something going and your label is able to put you with her, so it seems like you're on a good path and good hands, so that's that's good to see. Yes, what I can say is the gentleman, his name is Wick, he's the CEO of um of Black Excellence. Mm -hmm. He saw something in me and he really believes in me and it really shows. He mm -hmm. has gotten me on show like this stuff it costs studio time costs like i'll record at one studio and then when i do the professional one he'll like get me at a different studio photo shoots the hair the outfit the traveling it really costs and he believed in me and i am returning the favor by taking it serious and doing what i need to do like the whole team is excellent um the producer he makes the beats like from scratch um, sometimes he'll give me an, uh, an idea of like what he wants the song to be or how he wanted to sound but sometimes he'll already have the beat ready or sometimes we'll make it like a baby like I'll say it gotta have like most yeah. thump or like make it like like this or no take that out and they're so open-minded and they they really like when I think back on it, it almost made me want to cry how much they saw something in me and like actually invested it in me not just talk not just say do you want to rap or we believe in you we gonna make you the next star or whatever like they actually doing it and they getting it done you know we have our growing plans but much love to black excellence and everybody on the team and we do have other artists but right now i'm the first artist that they're propelling yeah. and i think after a year or so i think every few months they're gonna push, push a new one out yeah but right now um i'm the one that they're initially um, yeah, pushing out we gonna see what happens from there. Most Shout stuff, most stuff. Shout out Black Excellence. Shout yes. out Boss Lady Key. Yes. And it was a pleasure having you. I must say, you we definitely have, gotta, to have, you back. have to have you back. Listen, listen. Let me tell y'all something. Y'all, I think y'all was the first people that people um tweeted under my tweet. That's, yeah, yeah. That is the power of social media, and that's what exactly. people gotta understand. Like. I, I felt like it'll be necessary for me to start networking with people, mm -hmm. to get to know people because you never know when you might need me for some mm -hmm. shit or y'all might need me to get Erica Banks in this bitch or you know, who, whomever. So exactly. it's like, 
I feel like it's time for us to network, especially as black young people pursuing something outside of the norm. And I said, listen, is it any podcast in Florida? And they was like, yo, Kyle, Kyle got one, Kyle got one. And I was like, Kyle, what's up? <laughs> like, yeah, so yeah. I am so happy that y'all invited me, that y'all allowed me to come. Mm-hmm. Y'all have been nothing but welcoming and warm from the moment I walked in. So I, I if anything, I am more humbled. Like, I don't know how y'all feel about having me, but I am no. so happy to be here, yeah. like, dead the fuck ass. Like, yeah. I want to talk all day. <laughs> To, uh, like I said, you can come back anytime, anytime you want. Anytime, like, it's always something to talk about, and you're very opinionated, and you know, you can anytime, anytime. Keep like, yeah. tweeting so I can have keep having tweet right now. <laughs> give us more content. Right, right. I tweeted some shit today. I tweeted some shit today about niggas fucking and making our wigs fall off and the oh, yeah, in yeah, the skull yeah, cap yeah. and all that, yo. Yeah. But yeah, I, ain't, I ain't tweet that yeah, much today. Yeah, you're yeah. hilarious, but. Thank y'all for tuning in. It was a pleasure having Key. Uh, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. We come up with more content each and every week. Once again, it's Kata Kid, Mega the Boy, Key. And yes. we out. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Tell them to follow me on um, oh, oh, yeah. Instagram at BossLady underscore Key. You can follow me on Twitter at that bitch. Key. We're going to put it right here. Yeah, yeah. they're going to put it somewhere down yeah. there. And yeah. I just made a TikTok. I think it's called Boss Lady Key, too. So. Just follow all that. Tap in, y'all tap Tap in. in. Most deaf. Yes, sir. Bye.